When you first create a Windows Forms project, there are a few things I recommend you do. For example, I recommend changing the default font size since it starts out at nine point. Waiting to change that will actually have negative implications for your project, which I will show you. In this 10 minute training video, we'll go through the first few tweaks I recommend you make to any WinForms project. Now, for most of my training, I work to give you an in-depth perspective on a technology, but sometimes you just need a quick overview of a topic. That's why I created this 10 minute training series. Be sure to check out the playlist with the other 10 minute training videos. So here I have a WinForm project at the very beginning. So this is just file new project, and we now have our, our Windows Form project to get started on. But there's a few things I think you should tweak. And the very first one is Form 1. I hate the idea of having it be called Form 1. Now, there's a reason why it's called Form 1, because Microsoft has no clue what it should name that first form. So it named it, named it something that it knows, or they know, you're going to have to change. So let's change this form one, but there are implications. Notice in program.cs, we have new form one. That's because this is the line that launches your application. Your, this is what launches your form. So this is where you need to make sure it also gets changed. So let's go over to form one and let's rename it. And for now, I don't know your application. So I'm gonna rename this to just be dashboard. That's probably the, the name of your, you know, your first form, your, your main form, your application. So it's going to rename a file. Would you also like to perform a rename in this project of all references to the code element form one? Notice in program.cs form one. Notice that, you know, we have other potential areas where this might be. So yes, we want to rename this. So now it says new dashboard in program.cs. If we go to the code behind, we see public dashboard. That's the constructor for the dashboard class because this used to be called form one, but now it's called dashboard because we renamed the file and all of the associated elements that were called form one to be now called dashboard. That's the first tweak I think you should make. Now with that tweak, let's close out program.cs. Notice that in our form, it still says form one. Why is that? Well, because that is just a text field on our form. So we can change that, select your form and go to properties. If you don't have properties, go to view, scroll down and there's property window or hit F4. Note that this is Windows form, by the way, is only for Windows because it's in the name Windows Forms. And the reason is not because Microsoft is hiding it from other platforms, but because it uses the underlying Windows DLLs in order to build out the application. The same as WPF, the same as UWP, the same as WinUI3, and so on. Most of Microsoft's uh, forms elements are tied directly into the operating system, which is why I don't work on Mac or Linux. So it's something that they have been working on changing. I mean, we've got things like .NET MAUI now where they're working on desktop applications that are cross-platform, but Windows forms uh, like WPF and the others are all tied into Windows only. So let's go over to our properties now of our form. We have form selected and notice under text, we have form one. Now, if you have this view where you have it broken up into sections or categories, um, you'd find it under appearance text. I personally choose the sort by alphabetical, which is the second icon here. And the reason why is because I can never remember what category things might be in. So I can more easily remember a name or, or look through the names. So I just choose this. I'm gonna change this to say uh, dashboard uh, by Tim Corey. Okay, and that notice that it now says dashboard by Tim Corey, not as dashboard, because it doesn't have to match the actual form name. This is what you display to the user, this dashboard by Tim Corey. So you get to choose what that might look like. So that's the that's one of the first tweaks I make is that rename. But let's keep going and let's look at that font issue because the font issue is one that is problematic. So let's put a couple of uh, labels. Let's grab label one and we'll grab label two. And also let's put a button just so you can see. 
And now I look at label one and say, hey, you know what? That should be a header. So let's go to properties on that label. Let's go to font and let's change that to, uh, you know what? I'm going to make that uh, 14 to make it bigger than all the rest or 16, well, 14. You know what? Nope. I'm going to make it, yeah, 14 is good. So now it's bigger than all the rest. Okay. So now I look and go, oh, you know what? If I go just select the form itself and go to properties, it says font size is nine and that's way too small. So let's change that to be, well, I'm showing this to you on YouTube. So let's make it 18 because it makes it more, everything more readable. I hit okay. And first of all, the form gets bigger. And then also label two and button one get bigger and label one is still now seems small. And the reason why is because label two and button had not changed their font size. So they're using by default the font size from the form, which means that they've now changed to be 18 point font themselves. But because I had changed the font size on label one, it uses that font size instead of inheriting from the form. Therefore, it's now actually smaller than label two and button one. So this is why you want to change your font size at the beginning, because first of all, it changes the size of the form, which also messes with the layouts of the controls. But also, if you start setting specific font size, then go, oh, I want to change the default. Well, then that's going to change the sizing between all the controls, and it's not going to change the, the controls that you've already modified manually. So just note, you want to change your form's font size first before you put anything on the form. It just makes life easier. Now, this is going to be something you do per form. Okay. Next up, when you build an application, if you're building a small one, you know, leaving the, this dashboard form in the root might be the right call. But maybe you want to have a folder structure for your UI. So let's select starter win form and I say control shift A. And I'm going to add some folders. So let's say forms and then, um, I don't know, let's call it main forms. You know, not a great name, but just kind of show you a hierarchy, right? So this is what we'd want to have. We might put other um, folders inside forms, but dashboard will go into main forms. So we drag and drop. Uh, dashboard into main forms, and it's going to say, do you want uh, to move this? Yes. It may take a long time. It should not. Adjust namespaces for moved files. Yes. Now, when you do this, it might not actually adjust those namespaces. Let's go over to our, our code behind. And no, our namespace has not been changed. And you come over here to the designer and no, our namespace has not been changed. So let's change that manually. So it should be starter win forms dot forms dot main forms. That would be our new namespace. They come over here to our our um, dot CS file and notice we can now have an error on this initialized components because we're in the wrong namespace. Let's change that to be the right namespace. Let's also put our semicolon here to use a file scope namespace. And now we're set, we have the correct namespace, but we're still not done because we have to come over here to program.cs. Notice that now we have a red squiggly on dashboard because it doesn't know about that namespace. So let's do our file scope namespace here. And then before this, we're going to say using and our namespace. Now it'd be uh, starter wind forms dot forms dot main form. Now you're all set up to start your application and start working because you've changed the font size, you've renamed your main form, and you put a good folder structure in place. So those are the tweaks I recommend you do when you first start a Windows form project. If you don't need a folder hierarchy, then don't put one in. But think about your folder hierarchy before you just start making forms. Okay, thanks for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.